This video is brought to you by our trusted partner, Intel. For a limited time only, with the purchase of any unlocked Core i5 or Core i7 Intel CPU, get a free Intel beanie with a chance to win an Intel snowboard. Valid for Canadian and US customers only, some restrictions apply. For complete details, visit intelgamingpromo.com. Before we start guys, a word from our sponsors. If you tweet hashtag Intel Inspires to with your favorite game, you'll have a chance to win a Lenovo Ultrabook. Also, if you haven't already, check out the VIP Tech Zone app. It's available on Android and iOS, and it's got things like news, giveaways, um, gaming stuff, all kinds of interesting things. I think mostly the giveaways are gonna be what drive most people to download it, but check it out, VIP Tech Zone. Welcome to day one of my Android iSwitch. So let's start with the actual phone itself. The screen is extremely accurate. So if you're trying to do something like uh, make a correction to a URL, there's a pretty good chance that I can get it, even with my thumb. This is also something that I love about Android compared to iOS and Windows Phone. You don't have to use the accurate cursor here. You can usually go, okay, I'm gonna try and get it here and it'll at least give you a shot at it before it gives you the option to correct what you've done. So the screen is very accurate, which makes that actually work a lot of the time. The stock keyboard layout does feel a little bit weird. Look, look at what they've done here. So these middle keys are actually wider, and I understand why that is, because if you have small hands, they're gonna be easier to reach in the middle, but it does make typing on it a little bit awkward because I expect the keys to be the same size. I also expect these two bezels to be the same. So what I found myself doing sometimes is sort of typing on one side of the keyboard and missing things like the left shift. It's not the end of the world and I'll just get download a uh, keyboard app such as Swift Key or Swipe, I think are two of the popular ones. No matter what you wanna play, play back, they can get extremely loud with no distortion. They weren't quite as loud as uh, Diesel's Galaxy Note 2, but definitely loud enough that you could actually be doing something and listening to it in the, in, over something else. So let's so check this out. So for contrast, this is me talking in a normal conversational voice with Big Buck Bunny running in the background. So it's as easy to hear as someone talking to you from, you know, like a foot away. NX NFC is a huge plus, so I've already used it a couple times. Um, I would have liked to see wireless charging. I hate micro USB. I think I'm well documented as being a hater of micro USB. It's an extremely fragile connection and I wish it would just die, but it seems to have just become a standard for some reason when mini B, like there's no reason you couldn't have put a mini B here. I'm not convinced micro USB actually improves the slimness of devices. Battery wise, I've had a lot of people ask me about this. So check this out. I've been using this all day this is day one um, it's midnight It's after midnight now I've watched at least three hours of videos on the phone uh, whether with headphones or with speakers throughout the day I've made some calls I've done some tweets I've used it the way I would in a pretty heavy workload day this is a weekend so while I didn't make as many calls I was definitely streaming video over it much more often I am extremely impressed compared to my older iPhone 4 which in its defense was a little bit on the older side um, this is way more usable and compared to the HTC 8X running Windows Phone, streaming video using Emit, which is the app that I've got as my replacement for Air Video. Uh, so using Emit is much less demanding on the phone and on the battery life than the uh, Windows Phone equivalent, which I can't remember the name of for the life of me. So Emit is something I would consider to be actually a suitable replacement for Air Video. It starts up extremely quickly. I'm not gonna play this back because I'm worried about uh, any kind of copyright infringement on the video, but there you go. It starts very quickly, very responsive. You have to run a server app on a computer in the household, but awesome. Um, so I figure I could get through two light days with this, no problem, which is exciting. However, I'm not using 4G because this isn't 4G in my area yet. Uh, hopefully I'll be swapping it out at some point and I'm not using wireless AC. With that said, it's pretty sweet that it supports wireless AC because Anantec actually posted an article on this saying they got up to 275 megabit tested, not theoretical on this phone using wireless AC. So I have an AC router in the mail on the way to me and hopefully I'll be able to update you guys on that uh, sometime soon. The auto rotates a little bit hyperactive um, so this has been this has been bothering me a little bit. So let's say I wanted to reply to a tweet. Uh, normally I would um, I'd go okay maybe I'm you know laying doing something. Watch how quickly it auto rotates. And there it goes. So I'm actually only, I'm I'm only halfway between horizontal and vertical, 
and it's auto-rotated already, which for some people, maybe this seems like a, a fairly small complaint, and it actually is. It's a beautiful phone. There's no way I'm going back to the iPhone 4 after this, having spent only a day with it so far. But I wish it was a little bit more like, yeah, I want you to rotate, then it, then it would rotate versus I'm halfway in between. Like I, with the iPhone 4, you could kind of go, yeah, no, do this. And then you could kind of play with it a little bit and, and get it close so you could kind of use it. Um, also, I wish that like TouchWiz, I wish that HTC's interface had a quick auto rotate here. However, there's got to be an app for that or something. Uh, screen's amazing. The viewing angle's outstanding. Here, I'll just give you guys like a browser page to look at or maybe like here's a, here, let's play back an unboxing. You guys can see Welcome what it looks like. Unboxing. Okay. Speakers are loud. <laughs> so you can see what it looks like head on, and then you can see what it looks like from the side. There's no color shift. It uses Super LCD 3, so you don't get any of that weirdness that Samsung has with their AMO LED screens, where they are actually slightly higher resolution in some colors versus other colors. Text is extremely crisp. This is the kind of thing I can't convey through a video like this, but um, no matter how small the text is on the screen, I can read it clearly, even at a distance, because it is so crisp. It's really, really nice. Uh, Zoes, Zoes, or whatever they're called. So you open up the camera app, and there's an option that you click on right here, and you go, okay, I want to record a, a Zoe. So let's have a look at my FPS Doug poster here. So I go, do, 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 do. You can see there's a little uh, bar going. So it's taking some still pictures as well as a video. And what it does with, uh, with those is it allows you to either see like a, a sort of a one to two second video capture moment or a still image. And so it's a neat way of capturing both at full res at the same time and, uh, and, and getting a moment sort of even if you would have missed it with the, uh, and the shutter's quick, so the odds of missing it are slimmer, but even if you would have missed it. Check out the gallery for a minute though, guys. Uh, so here's the, I want to show you guys the highlight reel feature. Okay, so here it sorts things into events. So my photos events, so I can go, I can pick a day, you can, you can move things in and out of different events, and it does, so up at the top. So all the individual things are down here, and then up at the top it has a highlight reel. So it'll automatically set it to music. And it'll add a bunch of cuts, it'll add some kind of effect. I'd love to see what HTC is going to do with this over time in terms of adding more music, uh, more effects, more cool stuff like that. But it's a really neat way to review the photos and videos that you took throughout a day in about 30 seconds. So if you're showing someone with a short attention span, which let's face it, we all have short attention spans these days, um, it's, a, it's a, just a really cool effect. Let's, uh, let's watch the highlight reel for this day. It just does it automatically. So there's the baby using the phone. It puts like a film grain effect on it. All of this is without any work whatsoever. Here he is trying to drink some water. And just the fact that it's jumping around to, uh, to different, different angles, different points in the movie all the time makes it very impactful. So uh, I'd love to be able to put my own music on it, which is another thing. Uh, the haptic feedback on this phone is excellent. So some, uh, some phones, some devices, you touch it and the whole thing kind of goes and it just feels crappy, it feels cheap. Uh, not on this one, it's very tight, very, very responsive. The default app loadout, it's not bad. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of the Blink feed here. So this is just uh, social media and like sort of other things, like updates. Uh, but you don't have to make that your home. You can set to more of a standard Android home. Um, and then this interface here is a vertical scrolling interface, kind of more like gingerbread. Um, not sure if I'm a big fan of this either, so I think I'm going to go for the default Android layout once I've had more time to personalize it and add the apps that I want. Uh, oh, speaking of apps, the default app loadout is not bad. So, I mean, they've got things like SoundHound on here, which is awesome. The music app needs a lot of work. The UI is uh, not great on this one. So things like, uh, like just little simple stuff, like if you search for something, uh, so, so I don't know, let, let's find my ace of bass. If you search for something, it doesn't have this option here to add it to a playlist. Whereas when you're just going through your songs, you can see there's here, there's a bunch of options for things you can do with it. So it needs some, uh, it needs to be refined a little bit. I just found it not that easy to, whoops, not that easy to navigate. Um, but here, let's go. So you've got your media apps, your Google apps. It comes with Twitter. Uh, it comes with car, maps, clock, productivity wise, it comes with Dropbox. Almost everything you see here was preloaded on the phone. Nothing unnecessary and stupid. So, um, I mean, okay, I don't know if all of it's necessary. I haven't dug through it. This is all stuff that I added so far. 
Uh, Beats Audio seems to be just an EQ setting. Not that impressed in terms of the overall audio quality over headphones coming from the iPhone 4. So let's, uh, let's talk general Android. I wouldn't mind if there was an easier way to see battery life percentage, but I'm sure there's a widget or an app for that or something. Moving from a platform that does not have great app support like Windows Phone 8, is, uh, is just a breath of fresh air, being able to go, okay, I need, uh, I need a scanner app. I need a, a movie streaming app. I need whatever. There's something there for sure. You want to change the fonts on your phone. You might have to root it for that. Actually, I'm not sure. I recently rooted my wife's Droid DNA um, and installed a custom ROM on it and everything. So I'm familiarizing myself with uh, with the platform as much as I can. And there's a lot of really cool options when you do that. But I won't be rooting the HTC One during my 30 day period with it. I'm gonna you be using Sen actually Sense 5.0 hasn't bothered me yet. So this is this is one thing. I mean, I'm not. I, this isn't something that I think I'll end up using. Um, and Blink Feed's kind of the kind of thing that I would, it's, uh, it's sort of like the People app on Windows Phone 8 where it's like, oh, okay, here's another, it's got some interesting stuff. And I love highlight reels and those are good. The camera on this thing is awesome. So here's just a video of the baby eating eggs. Just, oh, looks so good. Okay, well, that was a very short video. Oh, that was, oh, that was a Zoe <laughs> or a Zoe. Native Twitter app is so superior to the iPhone one. On the iPhone one, you'll reach the top and it'll go loading, 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 and then you can scroll up again. So when there's been a lot of them, it used to be you could double click on it in the iPhone one and it would just go to the top. But uh, yeah, this one's butter smooth interfacing with this thing, which is just awesome. So overall, I'm pretty much sold on Android at this point, but there'll still be more updates. I'm not just gonna cop out and go, yeah, day one, Android wins. Uh, so. Stay tuned, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.